Yo, today we're at Boston Van Home up in Tempest. I know you guys know where Boston is, downtown Miami. All the greatest coming here in Tree. And today I'm with two greats. I got my man Earl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my boy Jordan. You guys are crushing the independent game. And they've just been going crazy. So we got a you know, two for one special with you guys. We just wrapped up a crazy workout. You guys will be seeing that. It took 15 years just to be able to get to that one moment. Yeah, so pretty much what he's saying, you got to have money on the best with him. The best player. We all know who put the best numbers up. I was born in 91. When I came out the womb, they, they signed my birth certificate and said, trainer at my first gym. I opened up one gym. One gym turns into three gyms. COVID happened. I lost those gyms. So I got introduced to the weight room in ninth grade. I was about to pass out and I was walking away. But just because they were like, Nah, man, come on, man, we gotta go. The motivation like that, that's everybody's like dream. Yeah. Thank me. <laughs> I wanna get to know them a little bit better and use their story to inspire you guys to start your fitness journey and go crazy. So we're gonna start off with the right. Can you just yourself, Earl? Uh, Earl Wolf. Uh, I'm a fan of North Carolina. I uh, went to NC State, played football there for four years. NFL for five years. I retired five years ago. Retired due to injury, but that did not, I still didn't let that injury limit me. All right, so once I retired, I got independence, uh, performance, uh, steady training in general. Um, and the thing is, a lot of football players when they retire, they stop working out because most of us have been forced to work out our whole life. But to me, it was never a force. To me, it was always a blessing to help people. Of course, of course, always to physically help myself. So I got into making people better. So now I'm, a, I'm, I'm the head performance coach at Boxer Gym, training some of the professional boxers, including David Benavitez. I trained some uh, uh, executives, uh, some, some businessmen, um, and they love it, I love it. And mo most importantly, I'm helping them achieve their goals every day, physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. Yeah, so pretty much what he's saying, you gotta have money on the best with him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you gotta bring it. You gotta have that money. Hey, but it's worth every dollar, you hear me? Hundred percent. See what he's doing out here. You already know. Yeah. So like introduce yourself, Jordan. I'm Jordan Short. Uh, I'm a personal trainer. I'm a gym owner. I work with a lot of executives as my man does. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, home of the greatest basketball player ever. Minus the name Jordan. He's like the second best That's player. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Michael, Jordan, Michael Jordan the best, I'm listening to him. The second best player. We all know who put the best numbers up. Speaking of numbers, accountability and commitment to be able to be here every day is what I'm about. I'm about the consistency. I'm about the growth, the progression, and the energy with my homies in here getting us together. As they said, we actually did one of my favorite workouts today, the calisthenics. So you're going to see that coming up after this. And uh, I don't cost as much as him. So if you need to sign up with me, you can sign up with me too. <laughs> First of all, who's the, who's the most uh, popular person you, you guys have ever trained? Who most popular person I have ever trained? Yeah. All right, so not including football players, I said I'm right now I'm training uh, David Benavitez, who is fighting Vegas. Wow. Um, I'm a fifth performance coach. Um, it's, been, it's been an honor, it's been a pleasure, you know, because I kind of stayed away from the sports thing. Um, and really just trying to just train injectors and business people, you know? So now I'm back and I'm back doing something I love with athletes, a top level athlete like myself. So I would say David Benavitez as of right now. Fire, fire. What about you? The most influential person is probably Lori Harvey. Yeah. Everybody knows who that is. That's everybody's like dream. Uh, yeah. Thank me. <laughs> there you well, go. What did you learn from training him though? Training her? Oh, her. Uh, that, um, that's a good question. I learned that anything was possible and it happens. It takes 15 years to become an overnight success. That's something that I always put it in my, yeah. I, I, I took that into perspective. I wanted to be able to do that forever. And it, it seemed like it happened overnight, but when I go back and like, I look at the whole routine of being able to get to that, it was a process. Yeah. And I understand that it took 15 years just to be able to get to that one moment. And what did you learn from training? Doing the um, I feel like, then from my, from a strip, so I trained with some of the best strip coaches in the world because I played football. Um, but training a boxer uh, is very different. So I caught myself going back into learning and studying a lot more every day. Every day I'm learning more, I'm studying more. So me knowing like, I gotta bring it every day, which I do bring it already. Energy wise, I bring it. But when it comes to workout, um, a lot of rotational power with them, a lot of rotational strength. Um, I'm just learning kind of 
how he moves his body, and really just learning how to really uh, adjust to that kind of training. And how did you get, how did both of you guys get your start in this industry? Oh man, oh, wow. it's on me. So it's crazy, right? I charge a good amount now. Yeah. Um, but when I first got into it, um, I didn't retire due to injury, so it was kind of unknowing, you know? I didn't know what my next step was, my next path was. I consider going back into coaching. That's still something I love to this day. Um, but I train in the gym every day, and one of my boys was like, Earl, you should think about being a personal trainer. I'm like, I don't know if it's something I would like, enjoy. Um, I was like, on a Friday, the matter of fact, Earl, start training me. So I started training him. And the next thing you um, know. At like $30 an hour, at like $34 an hour, nothing yeah, crazy. Yeah. I got into him, um, bro, literally, it's a process. $40 an hour, getting one person, then two people, and 10 people at 80, 10, 10 people at 100, 15 people at 200, you know what I'm saying? So like, people think like, yeah, I am where I am now, not even knowing my story. Like when I got done with football, I went good, broke. Good, I had nothing. Good, good, yeah. I, I, so I, I had to make a choice and go back home and coach or stay out here and figure it out. I jumped in, uh, adjust and adapt, and I adjusted and I adapted. And now it was just, been, it's been a blessing, man. It's been a blessing. It's a hard journey. Hard journey, people think it's easy. Like, they see where we are now, they're like, oh, look at them. Yeah, not I know our story. Fitness. Not I started off from. with Planet Fitness. Yeah, that's dope. I used to train in Planet Fitness. I used to sneak wow. into Planet Fitness wow. and train. I used to have to work out with all my clients to act like I wasn't training them. And then they finally got familiar that I was training and they kicked me out. Yeah. And then I went to a personal training gym, paid the rent, you know, that whole stage, get clients, go through being broke because my rent is over than what I'm making yeah. from the clients. Go through that stage, start doing classes, grow the classes up. I go from doing a class with two people to doing classes with 50 people. Those 50 people paid for me to have my first gym. I opened up one gym. One gym turns into three gyms. COVID happened, I lost those gyms. Best thing that could have happened to me. Cause I learned so much from losing that I gained so much. Yeah. I moved to LA, moved to LA, it took off. It took off from there. Now I live in Miami and LA. I love. Uh, six months is six months. I'm way up here. All right, so, so what I took from both of their story is like there's different paths. Obviously, they're both highly successful in the same position now, but they all have different paths. So guys, when you're crafting on your journey, don't think you have to follow that exact route that you know somebody that you look up to went. Sometimes life is gonna throw you some obstacles and some pivots. You gotta be conscious and willing to navigate to traverse those obstacles and still keep going because it, it could lead you to your end goal and where we are now in our in our journey. But you just might have to take a different route. So what would you would you guys say location plays a big factor into success? For sure. Oh. For sure. Especially all depending on what you're doing. Like if I was in my for example, when I was living 30 minutes away at Pembroke Ponds, I couldn't I feel like I couldn't people couldn't afford my value. Yeah. To be honest. So I moved demographic. Yeah. Target market. Yeah, exactly. Demographic target market. Mm. I moved to Miami. Yeah. And I moved into the parent. I moved downtown. Yeah, don't, drop, don't drop your audio done. Yeah. Don't. I, I, I moved We're to a, cut that out. Yeah, I moved to, I moved into a, a, a very nice building. And yeah, they have this, they have that. But I moved in there to secure the network. Yeah. And I got the network. Yeah. The network is what made my value go even, even, even more high, you know? But so literally, that's a demographic. Like, if I didn't live in Miami, if I still live in North Carolina, I wouldn't be where I am now, to be honest. So, yeah, and that was probably the biggest thing for me, moving. Yeah. Like I said, moving from Cleveland, Cleveland is a very small market. Like yeah. I said, you guys from Georgia, South Carolina. Carolina. I'm from Ohio. LA, Miami for the fitness. We're not saying that for everybody that's whatever industry you in. Make sure you do the research, look for your demographic, look for who your target market is, and make sure you attack that. Don't just move to Miami thinking that it's just gonna blow up. It's not gonna work like that. It's not easy. Yeah, it's not. Wow. You gotta find your demographic. Like my target market, I used to think it was females. And then I realized like that's not where the money is at. Yep. So I was gonna be eating Applebee's with a whole bunch of female clients. <laughs> so I was like, nah, let me see what my target is. <laughs> Baby, everybody. The like, male company, I look at you they're like, you're like, <laughs> hey, 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 like, hey, like, hey, like, 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 then your network changed from just going to Applebee's to having meetings at, at Nobu, at Komodo. Why? Because your clients are that. There's not too many other demographics besides Miami, LA, New York, the big demographics where yeah. you can get that. Yeah. So essentially, you are the product of your environment. Yes. Whatever industry you're searching for, understand where it's gonna thrive, where that environment is, and the people that you're looking for Make are, sure you direct. And then go into that and build what it, build your, your foundation, build your base, and then scale, all right? How long have you guys been doing like the, your fitness journey in general? Oh. 
I've been playing sports my whole life. Yeah. I would say, so I got introduced to the weight room in ninth grade. Remember that first day, I got that first pump? Bro, you can't tell me nothing. Yeah. So literally, I would be the first person in the weight room, last in the leap every day. The bell would ring. I'm getting my last set in. Right, because my goal is like, I didn't, want to be the, I didn't want to be the best on just my team. I didn't want to be the best just in the state. I want to be the best in the world. The only way I could do is outwork everybody in the world. That's what my mindset was. That's why even, that's why I fell in love with the weight room. And then when I retired, I didn't stop working out. Like I said, most NFL players, football players, they stopped working out. I retired, I took like a week off working out. And I, I, so I've been consistent in the weight room for 20 years. And now I stopped. No, no more than probably five days off. So it's just that consistency. But I love, but also, you gotta love what you do because when you love what you do, it don't feel like work. It don't feel like work, I love it. For me, I was born in 91. When I came out the womb, they, wrote, they signed my birth certificate and said, trainer. And that's what he said. So I've been doing it since then. So you was, you, you was in there doing some push-ups. I was doing push-ups. When they was doing an ultrasound, I was in there doing crunches, squats, pull-ups. They was like, he gonna be a trainer. And then here we are now. Okay. So guys, you're gonna take time. There's no skipping the work. None. Right? Here he is. Like, there's no, no getting past the work. You're gonna have to commit. You're gonna have to love it. And then you gotta put in that work and be like, how far did the Mentality goes in this, in, in this game in general. Like, do you, do you have to keep motivating yourself or pushing yourself? Like, what would you say? So, for me, I've always been uh, intrinsically motivated. So, I never needed nobody to really motivate me, you know, inspire me. I, I, it's always been here, but I always said God gave me that spirit. I just going to get it. Whatever it is, I gotta go harder than everybody else. So you, I gotta push more than anybody else. Oh, for sure. Yeah, very strong in my face. And that's a big foundation. Yes. So, yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, man. Very it, huge foundation. He is. He is why I am where I am today. He is why I am who I am. You know, and without him, I wouldn't be where I am. Most of us, most importantly, though, like I was a kid, I've always had that drive, that motivation. Even you know, back in the day, they used to be like, hey, you know, what about sports when they grow up? What to be a professional athlete? Everybody will raise their hand. I raise my hand, but really, my, my mentality is like, I'm, I'm really going. Yeah. I don't know the steps we're gonna take. All I ask is that God lead me. I'm gonna do all the work. And then I, and then, and then it got me to where I am. That's profound. Bro. Yeah, man. My motivation comes from waking up every day and it being 80 degrees, no worries, no stress. And I don't work because I do something that I love as a passion. Yeah. So to be able to do that, if I gotta be in the gym, I'm gonna be in the gym. Long as that I can have financially freedom and then have freedom as in like have time to be able to do whatever I want to do. Like go to the gym, that's what I want to do. If I can do that, have a profession and be here with my guys and get motivation. Cause I, I was about, I don't know if we got that on camera when I was about to pass out, right? Yeah. I was about to pass out and I was walking away. But just because they were like, nah, man, come on, man, we got to go. That motivation like that, that energy, boosting me up to be able to get back in here and to be able to go through with what I was about to do. All right, so two key factors from what they both said, guys. I'm gonna break it down for you guys. One, you need a spiritual foundation. You gotta find someone higher than you, that you that's gonna push you through the ups and the downs and Emulate keep you greatness. Two, surround yourself with great people, yes. right? The, the, your reach is gonna be as far as the people that you keep around you, all right? Uh, we're gonna wrap it up. Five year old you. Of everything you've been through, what advice would you give yourself at the age of five? To either expedite your growth curve or get you to where you are right now? Um, I would say, uh, I would tell myself the environment that you are born and raised in doesn't make you who you are. But it also has to make that decision to, like, for example, like, I'm from, I'm from the Fayetteville area. Been around, I've seen so much. I've seen we killed, I've seen people get shot, I've seen more people where I'm from don't make it. I would tell myself to keep pushing. Whatever you want to do, you can do. Which is pretty broad, but really it's here. When I say it, I mean it. Whatever you do, you want to do. You want to put yourself around the right people and work. Work, knowing that like, obstacles are gonna hit. Trial and tribulations are gonna hit. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep thriving. That's that's the whole, the, the point of this, the, the moral of the story here is, stop letting your environment be your excuse. Yeah. Run hard and put in the work, and you'll get what you want out of it. What would you say to your young self? My young self at five years old, I would say, embrace the journey more, 
enjoy the time with family, and make sure that you pay attention to intricate details, because everything is going to play out just the way it's supposed to be, because where I am right now is where I want to be. Only thing I would do is just go back and do everything again, but just pay attention to the detail and embrace it two times. I wouldn't want to change anything. I wouldn't blame it on anything that I did or where I'm at. I would just be able to just be like, hey, listen, you're a great guy. You got good energy. You're respectable. Your morals are right. Just make sure that you stay on that journey and make sure you work out a little bit harder so you can look like this one day. Instead of me like, right, I want to be, I'm 200. I always wanted to be 250. I'm gonna tell my that's what I'm gonna tell myself at five. Eat more. Yeah. <laughs> and buy out yeah. five five whoop and, and, and room earlier in life. Uh, y'all see y'all gonna find me. I was in Africa. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I was yeah. deep in the village. <laughs> just surround yourself with great people from the beginning. Like right? just make sure your friends. Your relationships stay solid through life. Yo, guys, hey, I hope this guy's story inspire you to be great and to stop making excuses and go get what you want. They did it. We're out here in Miami. We got more interviews coming, more great stories. And if you guys are ever out here, hit them up, train with them, and just elevate your life. Because like we said, your environment and the people you keep around is going to determine where you go in life. Stay blessed. Amen. Love.